Hello, my name is Michael Kaler, and I am the lab manager of the Gyim Diffraction Facility, which is a user facility housed in the Joint Institute for Advanced Materials at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Individuals from UT, outside universities, national labs, and industry are all welcome to use our facilities. This video covers how to determine the crystallite size and microstrain using Riedfeld refinements. I have another very similar video to this one that analyzes my own data, but I am including this one so that you can see how to analyze the practice data provided by Panalytical and to compare the results to those obtained using the Scherer equation and a Williamson-Hall plot. These steps are almost identical to my other video except for one thing which I will point out in a few minutes. Just like with the Scherer equation and Williamson-Hall plots, the first step is to determine the instrumental broadening. While this step was very similar for those two methods, it is different for the Riedfeld method. We will need to start by opening our diffraction pattern from the standard. So we go to File, Open, go to the local disk C, Program Files x86, scroll down to Panalytical, High Score, and Tutorial. And here you see a list of files that are used in the example problems presented in HighScore's help files. I highly recommend that you go through the help file as it is excellent. Now this video will cover how to analyze these files using the Riefeld method, but I will only look at the raw file. If you want, you can analyze the 400, 500, and 600 degree annealed samples. But to start, we will use the cerium oxide-NBS in order to get our instrumental broadening. Now, before we begin, I just want to make it abundantly clear that if you want to analyze your own samples, you would not use this file. I'm only using this file because I will be analyzing data provided by Panalytical. If you want to analyze your own samples, you need to get your own line profile standard. You can get these from NIST, you can get cerium oxide, lanthanum hexaboride, or silicon as a few examples. And you would prepare the sample and collect a diffraction pattern on it using the same instrument and the same optics as the samples that you want to analyze. With that warning out of the way, let's get to the part of this video that is different from my other video dealing with using Riefeld refinement for crystallite size and microstrain analysis. In the other video, I would right click and perform a search match in order to get the candidate pattern for the standard phase, which was silicon for that video, and then I converted it to a phase. But for this example, we can go to File, Insert, or we can do Insert here. If we go back a folder to High Score, and then click Structures, we have this standard.cry. Double click that, and we see a list of phases. Now we have cerium oxide, so I will put a check mark next to the three. OK. And now we see the phase here, and we see the phase here, which is under refinement control. Before we go on and perform our refinement though, there are a few other parameters that I want to set. If we left click global variables, I want to change this solver tolerance to something a little more demanding. I will enter an extra zero, enter. I will also scroll down and click the box next to calculate errors. Let's go to the phase and then scroll down. Here we see size strain analysis and we want to make sure that says none for the standard sample. Even though we do want to perform a size strain analysis on our samples, we do not want to perform it on the standard sample. Once those three items are correct, we will come up here and in automatic mode, click this button and perform a size strain analysis R phase fit. Here you can see that it is going through the different steps, so we will just wait for that to complete. Now that that's done, I want to look at one additional factor, and it involves the low intensity region around some of the peaks. I'm just going to pick these three peaks for example, and left click and draw a zoom box. You'll notice that I can't zoom in that far. It always keeps the biggest peak fully within the window. 
So if I want to zoom in farther, I will have to not have the automatic scale on. I want to go to zoom intensity and left click. Now if I zoom in, you'll see that it actually does zoom. Unfortunately, the data are pretty close to the x-axis. If you want to make them a little bit more visible, you can right-click, set manual ranges, and change your minimum intensity to zero. Click OK. And now we can see everything a little bit better. And what we see is a blue curve. That is your calculated curve. The red curve is your data curve. And then this dark green line at the bottom, that represents your background. And what we see is that the red and blue curves match up nicely, but at some point that blue curve drops down quickly until it hits the green curve, whereas the red curve continues to decrease slowly with decreasing two theta. This can be fixed by going to global variables and left clicking. And the problem is with the peak base width, which is in multiples of full width half maximum. What this means is that if it is set to 20, then your peak base will have a width of 20 full width half maximums of that peak. So if, as in this example, we see the blue curve drop down too quickly, it is because this number is too small. So let's change this to 30, and then come up here and perform another size strain analysis R fit. And now we see that our blue curve matches up more nicely with that red curve. If you are analyzing other data, I will let you zoom in on these low intensity regions to determine what your peak base width should be. Maybe you need a smaller number or a larger number. It all depends on your pattern. Let's left click this little plus sign next to the phase. And then we will click the plus sign next to the profile variables. And we see that we have five different profile variables that are refining. Here are their values. It is these variables that give us the instrumental broadening that we need to use in order to determine the sample broadening that we get from our diffraction pattern. So we want to save these values. To do that, we right click the phase and then come down here to take as size strain standard. Left click it. If we then left click global variables, we can then scroll down all the way. And under instrument standard, we see U, V, W, and then two K standards. If you expand those, you should see these values match these values here. So now we have our instrumental broadening saved. Let me point out that if the vast majority of your samples all use the same instrument and the same optics, then what you can do is come in here and right click and then choose Use Current UVW Standard Values as Default. If you choose this, then every time you open Highscore Plus, these values will automatically appear as your instrument standard. But if you tend to use a lot of different optics for your samples, then I wouldn't make these default. I won't make these default in this situation because this data file here, the standard data file, does not apply to my diffractometer since it was collected at Panalytical. So just for this example, I will save it by choosing Take as Size Strain Standard. So once we have that saved, we can right click on the phase and then delete it. We can then go to the scan list, right click the scan, and remove it. And now we have an empty file that has our instrument standard saved in it. So we want to save this file so that we can then insert our multiple other files one by one in order to analyze them. So we go to File. Save as. I will go to my YouTube and refinement folder, but you can save yours wherever you like. And I will save this as something like parameter file. And then normally I would save it with the optics that I used. For instance, one fourth divergence slit, one half anti scatter slit, and then I would just list the rest of the optics. That way I know exactly what optics apply to this parameter file, because any time you change even a single optic, you need to go back and take your line profile standard, 
collect another diffraction pattern on it using the new optics, because any change in your optics will change your instrumental broadening. But I don't know what optics were used for this diffraction pattern, so I will just call this my parameter file for YouTube. I can then come up here, click Insert, go back to High Score, go back to Tutorial, and now I can click any of these that I like. Again, I will just do the raw for this video, but you can analyze the others. So double click. We now have our new diffraction pattern in there. I highly recommend that you go ahead and save this as a new document. Make sure it's HPF. I will just keep it as the name it has here. I recommend you do this because you don't want to accidentally save over your empty file because you will want to use your empty file multiple times in the future for each of your individual sample files. So now that we have our diffraction pattern, I will go back, insert, high score, I will go back to structures, standard, and this time we have fluorite, so I will just choose fluorite, okay. Alternatively, you could right click, search match, find a file from your database, and then convert it to a phase. But let's go back to refinement control. And now before we perform a refinement, we just need to left click on the phase and then change our size strain analysis to size and strain. Now we can perform another size strain analysis R. And then if we left click on the phase and scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see this derived data, click the plus sign, and here we have the micro strain and percent, the ESD, crystallite size and angstroms, and then its ESD. So we see here that it is about 306 angstroms and 0.24% micro strain. What we see here is a summary of results. The first column contains the sample names. The second and third columns contain some of the results provided in the high score help file. And the last three columns contain the results from our series of videos. If you compare the results obtained by Rietveld Refinement found in the help file and this video as shown in the red boxes, you will see that they match very nicely. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you would like to learn more about the Giant Diffraction Facility, please visit our website. You should see the web address at the top right of your screen. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.